we got a little bit more information. He says that the system never actually ran within an hour of the installers leaving. Now, the installers said that it ran for an hour while they were cleaning up and tidying up and it was running just fine. So, I didn't see anything in the uh, installation application that would glaringly tell me that that would kill a compressor. We had a total static a 0.6, but that was generally agreeable. That turned out to be just at 1400 CFM on the blower performance chart. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's here, but the sign on the front of the store says that they're open. So we'll go see if we can find somebody here to let us in and get started. Here comes the moment of truth. So we've got a 42 degree ambient and a 71 degree return. We're going to check the manufacturer's data and see what that calls for. 42 and 71. Probably going to get 35 and 45. But if we shoot for middle of 42 we're at just under 90 psi call it 87 and 370 360 to 370 on the high side we're going to let it run for a little while it is looking like we're going to have to pull some refrigerant out but we'll let it run for a little bit while we check static on the system. I don't expect that our static is going to be very good though with the way that the duct buried under the concrete is sized. But if you don't test it, you're guessing. Okay, so we're fluctuating to 0.35 to 0.45 on the return side. Somewhere in that ballpark. We'll go ahead and grab the supply static around a point three, which gives us roughly a point seven. Point six to 0.75 in that range an average of about 0.7 would be my that would be what I would call it so we'll grab the installation paperwork and see what we can find on blower data at 0.7 we are on the factory speed tap for 
number four. And if we come down to point seven, we're moving just over 1600 CFM. So we're going to go ahead and move it to speed tap five as point seven static gives us almost 2000 CFM and we'll test it again. So there we are, speed tap number four, black wire. We're going to pull that off and drop it down to number five. And then fire it back up again. We do have a 15 kW heat strip in the system. And our only option for supply static is actually right there under the air handler as the rest of the duct is buried under the slab floor so we're getting the best we can at this point give it a minute to start back up okay so we're averaging a 0.7 again and that means we're moving 1900 and 22 CFM. Just for fun, we're going to put this data into the I manifold as with the latest update. You can do your user inputs, you can measure your airflow method by static pressure, you can give your return and supply static. I'm going to call that a point three on the supply and check return static again I'm going to call that a point four so point four calculate TESP gives us a point seven and manufacture airflow CFM at point seven inches of static 1922 CFM so 1922 that is phenomenal information to be able to record I didn't notice if it comes up on the report but I'm sure that we will get that information on the report in future updates even though we're just taking it at this point is what it looks like while we're here we'll go ahead and um, give get our electrical data for the air handler we've got an amp draw of 4.5 on line one we'll call it 4.7 line two and then we'll get our voltage to ground on line one and line two we'll go ground 120.5 3 and 120.8 120.3 we're going to wait until we get our uh, charge closer to correct before we record the electrical performance for the condenser but as you see here we're at 423 with a 36 degree subcool. I'm going to start by dumping a pound and see how that goes. So this is interesting. Five ton running under the conditions we've got right now is pulling 20.4, 20 and a half amps. It'll be interesting to see what that amp draw comes down to once we get the charge proper. This could take a minute.
Okay. So we got the low ambient cooling kit in. As long as we got a good location on the coil sensor, we should be fine. So that's that's done. I keep messing with the system so that it will um, keep dropping the head pressure. So I haven't had a chance. I've got two pounds out of it, but I haven't had a chance to be a hundred percent sure that it's actually low enough yet. Subcooling is about where I want it. Superheat is where I want it. But head pressure was a little higher a little while ago. So we'll give it a minute to run. I had to relocate my supply air sensor to right where I was taking my supply static because they're closing the urgent care office and I can't get inside. So we set the thermostat to go back to schedule at 6 p.m., which gives me about 50 minutes to get my charge right. Okay, so my subcooling is pretty much right on where I want it to be. My temperature has come up a little bit, so I'm not worried about a 200 or 386 PSI. Superheat is right where I want it as well, so we're going to call that good. Go ahead and go over to the report, take a system snapshot, save and send report. This ought to be just fine. I almost forgot to check in and let you guys know what the running amps was. It was 20 and a half amps when I started and we're down to just under 19 now. So obviously my head pressure was putting extra load on that compressor. The running load amps rated on the system is actually 26, I think 26 and a half. So at 20 and a half, we weren't bad, but definitely improved by getting our head pressure down. Well, at right at six o'clock, system shut down. I was done playing with it, and we got the cage on. We're just all finished all the way around. I think everything went well. Go ahead and head home now. It's been a good day. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you on the next video. Chill coming down on me